Wow. Clearly, the Bidens have been in Washington swamp for far too long. And my next guest believes he can send them packing. But after criticizing Biden's policies on LinkedIn, Vivek Ramaswamy was locked out of his account. He is now accusing the big tech giant of censorship. Joining us now with more, 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who's joining us from Iowa. Uh, Vivek, thank you so much here. I, a lot to unpack. Um, I want to get first, though, to this suppression, this idea that, I mean, LinkedIn, of all the places, you got locked out of LinkedIn? And I read the comments that you made. It was hardly something that was controversial. It seemed to be more fact than something that was demonstrably false, as they claimed. Jason, that's, a, try the way, that's the way I try to approach this campaign is on hard facts. There were hard facts about climate change policy, hard facts about Biden's relationships with China. And then I get locked out of my account. So people start to text me saying I can't access your stuff. So we sent an email thinking it was a technical glitch. They came back and said it contained misleading or inaccurate information. So my team asked them, well, what information was inaccurate? They came back and doubled down and said this violated their policies on hate speech, misinformation and violence. Now, when we actually began to then publicize that, I made that public, they started to get media inquiries. LinkedIn then backed off and said, oh, no, this was just an error on their part. This is not an error. This is <laughs> viewpoint-based censorship. And if it can happen to me, it's happening every day to Americans across this country to a platform where people use it to find jobs. So what they're saying is you can't find a job unless you actually speak the orthodoxies that they approve of. And that is wrong. So how do you fight back against it? Because you're right. It is it is a suppression of speech and these, quote unquote, mistakes. They always happen against conservatives. Right. It never goes the other way. I'm not a, I'm not aware of a single case where it goes the other way. But the suppression, the censorship, how do you fight back against that? So I think one thing from a policy perspective is that we need to roll back Section 230 C2 or else we have to say that we make it an opt-in statute. I have no interest in suing LinkedIn over this. But let's say this is happening to somebody who couldn't get this reversed as quickly as I did, and they did want to sue LinkedIn over it under a state law. They wouldn't be able to because LinkedIn enjoys a special form of immunity for Internet companies and Internet platforms that says they can't be sued even under state non-discrimination laws. My view is if the federal government gives you a special form of immunity and protection, then they ought to be bound by the same standards as the federal government itself. That includes the First Amendment. So if you want the special protections, great. Opt in, you get them, but you're bound by the First Amendment. If not, you don't get the special protections, then you get to operate as a true private company. That's the solution. It's been a long time part of I wrote about it in Woke Inc. It's part of my presidential platform. That's part of how we're going to secure Internet freedom in this country, which I think is part of what it means to be an American. Well, yeah, Section uh, uh, 230 is up for a reauthorization, and they can't have it both ways because it was supposed to protect yes. them as a level of uh, liability against another person saying something and using the platform to simply pass it on. And the Supreme Court is has weighed in on this recently, but they can't go in and do the actual suppression and the, the election engineering themselves, that is, I think, a different topic. All right, I got to move on, though. I want to talk about Joe Biden. That poll yeah. that showed that, two, that nearly two thirds of Americans say that it would just be a disaster if he's elected again. I think you and others see the vision of, hey, this is the opportunity. But the Democrats seem to get away with never having to come out of their hiding spot and just a basement strategy. Here we are in debt ceiling negotiations, and the president's not even doing a press conference. It actually makes more sense, Jason, if you see what's going on. Biden's cognitive deficits are not a bug to them. It is a feature to the managerial class that puts him up as their puppet. He's more easily controllable by the people who are pulling the strings, the real puppet masters, if he has those cognitive deficits. Their bet is that the country is going to go the same direction as in 2022 when there was a disappointing result for Republicans. But my view is we have an opportunity to win 2024 in a landslide election. I think this election, I'm making this less even about Republicans and Democrats. But whether you are pro-American, do you believe in the principles of this country and will you fight for them? 
or are you fundamentally anti-American? Kamala Harris and Joe Biden fit that description, apologizing for our nation founded on those ideals. If we do that, I think we can deliver a landslide election like what Reagan delivered in 1980. That's what I'm running to deliver in 2024. He is literally a lot more than twice my age. I'm 37 years old, the first millennial ever to run for president as a Republican. And I'm confident that if I get the nomination, I'll defeat Joe Biden in a landslide and have a lot of fun with him on the debate stage. Yeah, he was born in 1942. I believe you were born in 1985. It is a stark difference. He was first elected to the United States Senate in, in 1972, it's hard to believe how long he's actually been there in office. But I do think the, the chance for the Republicans is to win the vote and come in with an actual mandate to actually move the ball forward mm -hmm. with, with the legislative priorities. Vivek Ramaswamy, good luck to you. Thanks for joining us from Iowa. I appreciate you joining us on Hannity tonight. All right, as it stands now, Trump 